In today's video, I explain how you can weigh less and eat more. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rebella from ProPhysique.com and in today's video I'm going to detail how we can eat more food and have less body fat. The, the topic comes from my Instagram, so if you're not following my Instagram, here it is, and you can go back a few of my posts ago. And uh, I made a post about a client of mine named Paul who had dropped a lot of body weight. He was over 200 pounds and he was down to 170 and I'll post maybe some of his pictures here. And you can see there was a significant visual difference as you would expect when you lose 30 pounds. And so what I did on my Instagram post was I post his starting numbers and then I post his current numbers and people were um, a little bit confused and I got some messages so I want to explain myself and explain to you what the process is um, and so how it is that you can eat more and weigh less and all these things and understand that it's not just as simple as if you're overweight you start eating more and you lose weight and uh, I wish it was the case that'd be really nice so Let's talk a little bit about the process for Paul. When Paul came to me, he was over 200 pounds and he wanted to get leaner and look better. So I started him on a plan. These were his starting numbers. The numbers that I posted on my post were his starting numbers. So how did we get the body fat off? Well, over the course of about six months, we got him down. Now the way that I like to lose body fat is for someone of, of Paul's weight of 200 pounds, I like to keep weight loss about 1% of your body weight per week. That's right, two pounds per week. Now that might sound slow to a lot of people, especially when you're going through the grocery store and you see that it says, hey, you can lose uh, 24 pounds this month by this simple fix. Those are all bullshit. There is no simple fix. There is no hacking the liver. There is no hacking food. None of that works, okay? The only way to lose body fat and keep it off is to do it as a reasonable pace because if you allow the body to adjust to fat loss, the likelihood that you keep it off goes way, way up, okay? So the process with Paul was actually quite hard. We actually got to the point where we we're doing quite a bit of cardio. We were doing 30 minutes of steady state five days a week plus one day of high intensity cardio and we got carbohydrates down to 100 grams per day and 40 grams of fat per day through the process. Now that wasn't where we got to initially, but every time we would plateau, I would make an adjustment and then we got to a point where he was in the low 170s. I'd say, I think 173, 174 was about the lowest we got. Um, and then we decided to do what's called a diet break. Now a diet break, for those that aren't familiar, is a process of raising calories up to maintenance and bringing cardio down to maintenance. Now, maintenance is a dynamic term. So maintenance is not what he started out at. Maintenance would be determined basically by where I felt his calories and cardio needed to be to maintain his weight. So the week that we actually brought his calories up because he said he was kind of tired, he was feeling run down, and I said, you know what, let's do a diet break. Well, he actually dropped weight that week. Now, a lot of people right there would say, well, hold on, if you added calories and reduced cardio, how did he drop weight? Well, some interesting things happen to the body when it's very lean, and I can't even explain them all. I just have experienced it with hundreds and hundreds of clients because I work with a lot of competitors. Now, Paul had no interest in competing. In fact, during the time that he started doing this uh, fat loss phase, he got into cycling as a sport. You know, the guys that wear the shirts and they all cycle in groups down the street. Yeah, he started doing that. And so that was his outlet for cardio. So I think what probably happened the week that we brought his calories up and brought his cardio down is that his performance improved, his recovery improved. And for those that aren't familiar with the term NEAT or non-exercise activity thermogenesis, what happens when we go on a very strict fat loss phase and we raise our cardio up and bring our calories down, we start to focus on getting our cardio done in the gym but the rest of the day we become a little bit more sedentary and this kind of stuff, this fidgeting, this moving around, it adds up over the course of the days and weeks and months and when you stop doing it, well, it might offset the cardio that you're actually doing. So what I really feel happens in this process is that we see a slight improvement of the metabolism, meaning we get a better thermic effect of food. Thermic effect of food just means the calories and the chemicals that are, that are being burned through ingesting food. That can actually be reduced or adapted while we are dieting. 
I feel like the diet breaks for someone that's been at this for a long time actually allow the body and the hormones to really start to ramp up. So we're getting a better bang for our buck as far as digestion, right? Then you're also fidgeting more, you're moving more. I feel like stress, cortisol, those things might be reduced. If I'm bringing cardio down, there might be some inflammation reduction that has to do with the process of you know, doing cardio. Sometimes the soreness that you feel, that can actually lead to fluid retention and that type of inflammation. I also feel there's a very important hormone called cortisol that becomes super elevated when we are pushing our bodies very hard and not getting full recovery. And that's another thing that during a diet break I feel is improved. So what happened when he dropped weight during the diet break? Well, we decided to go ahead and continue that process and I just started adding calories, essentially turning his diet break into a reverse diet to the point where he actually got down another four or five pounds, down to 170 pounds. And from there, we have been adding calories every single week and his weight has not moved. He has stayed at 170, he is feeling great, he is performing. It's actually gotten to the point now where I'm actually making calorie jumps with him larger than I would normally make. I normally make calorie jumps in the 40 to 70 calorie per week range. With him, I've actually done some weeks where we added in 100 calories or more just to see how he would respond. In one week, he actually went up a pound, so we kept things the same. In the following week, that, that pound came back off. So why do I feel this is happening with Paul and what can you do to put yourself in this type of position? Well, one thing that I really think is happening with Paul is he really enjoys this cycling. It's part of his lifestyle now. So he's going to the gym training with weights. So he's putting on lean body mass. As you guys know, lean body ma mass actually increases your metabolic rate. It's one of the few things you can do to improve your metabolism. So now that he's actually getting stronger, he's putting on more muscle and Clearly in his update pictures, which I'm not going to share with you. I'll just show you the one I showed you, but his quads have gotten quite a bit more dense. So I know he's putting on some really valuable muscle there. So now he's performing better doing his cycling. He's got more muscle overall, and we're probably seeing Paul's metabolism get back to where it should be. I think a lot of us, a lot of the people I work with have underperforming metabolisms because in the past we've undertaken a strict approach to dieting, which causes a metabolic adaptation. That's not a bad thing. Our bodies adapt because of the process of survival, okay? So if there's less food from a survival standpoint, that's good if your metabolism slows down, otherwise you would starve faster. But because of that, I find a lot of people have an, an adapted metabolism from their diets in the past. So we're seeing like this dynamic shift in his body with more muscle, better performance, more neat because he's probably a little bit more fidgety than he was before. He's a little bit more active because he has more energy and then also, his metabolic rate is increasing and keeping up with the demand of the calories. So that's it guys. There's, it's, it might look kind of strange to see someone who is 30 pounds leaner now has abs walking around and is eating more than when he started the process of fat loss, but that's how it happens. It's not a quick thing. It's not magic. It's just a solid approach to a lifestyle of fitness. Okay guys, don't read the magazines when you're checking out at the grocery store and believe it. Okay. Put in the work and get it done. Hope you guys are having an awesome week. It's Monday, it's Olympia week. I'm going out to the Olympia. For anyone that wants to come see me speak, I am doing a presentation with my man Lane Norton, Holly Baxter, and Andres Vargas on Sunday in Las Vegas. I will put a link below to the details if you'd like to come see us speak in person. All right guys, I'll talk to you soon.